my background, basically, I come from a hearing family. So when I say a hearing family, I mean my immediate family, they're all hearing. Um, grandparents, cousins, they're all hearing. I am the only deaf person. So for them, for my parents, it was a real shock. So I was diagnosed age three. I have two older sisters, both hearing. So my parents knew something wasn't right, but not quite. What was the, the difference was I just went along for a normal hearing test and it was, Your, this child is deaf, she must immediately go off to the hospital and my poor mum drove across central London and took me to Mayday Hospital. I would say that um, from the age of three up to, um, to 23 when I finished my master's degree in the University of Southampton, um, it was all about what did Catherine need? So my parents didn't exactly have a book. They went out to the medical profession, to educational profession, what did Catherine need in order to achieve? How can we help Catherine? What was the right opportunity for me? And they actually offered me a cochlear implant. And that might have been a really difficult decision for my parent to have made, for any parent. But I think it was the right decision, mainly because the technology wasn't there and I did have news for hearing. And so they made that decision after a long, a long time to, for me not to have the cochlear implant then, but actually to carry on in mainstream school um, because they felt ultimately it was a decision I could make for myself later on, and that's what I did. So it, what then led me to the cochlear implant, I would say, I actually finished my master's and I was starting my first proper job, I should say, working at the uh, Southampton General Hospital. And I was 24 when I woke up one morning and put my hearing aid in and I couldn't hear anything. I came here to the implant centre and they put me through a series of tests. And that is when I started having the real conversation with the experts in the room, thinking this could be something for me. Because A, I had hearing loss. That doesn't mean it could or could not happen to my right ear, the one that I did have some useful hearing, but what happens if it did? So I was ready to start thinking about this, what is a major change, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> it's a major change. And the technology was right for me to have this major change. So I took a deep breath and I took the, had the operation at Queen Alexandra in June 2011. But I would say when they first turned me, switched me on, they had warned me that it would just be a, maybe a bit of beeping, and they were right, that's what happened. I had some beeping, and then within six weeks, I then started to recognise objects. And then, so it sounds like beeping, it, like a clock. I couldn't work out what it was, but it, the sound of a clock. There was some beeping when I was in the kitchen. It turned out it was the fridge telling me off that I hadn't shut the door. Um, so, so between the six weeks to two to three months, that's when my brain started to recognise objects and I was able to connect objects to what they were. Um, I would say it took three to six months for the brain to, to start to realise what they were and everything became natural. Um, I would definitely say that within six months, I was basically in a place where, OK, I didn't need to even think about it. It was starting to come very natural. Um, my speech was improving, I was more confident about wearing the equipment, I wasn't worried about breaking anything. So what does this mean in terms of now? I would say five years on, I'm more confident in group surrounding. I've always been sociable, I do like to go out down the pub with my friends, but I would say professionally that's where the difference has made in terms of I can pick up a phone and I don't think about it. I can do conference calls. Um, it's challenging. I get some things wrong, but I'm able to lead and chair meetings. I head up a team at the moment of about 20 people across Hampshire, Isle of Wight, Portsmouth, Surrey and Sussex. So I've got a large team of people working in the NHS. And particularly in the NHS of now, you have to demonstrate leadership. So those leadership still come from confidence and communication and that's where the cochlear implant I think has made that a little bit of difference. It's also made me feel confident to try things I've not tried before. So I love driving fast cars. Um, so I did a couple of track days driving Ferrari, Maserati, really good fun. 
Um, even wearing the helmet, even though it's a bit of a squeeze, um, it's absolutely fine. It's good fun. And the other thing I've tried was doing, I just flew a plane. I did a one flying lesson. Brilliant fun. Um, I wore the headphones and I could not understand what the uh, pilot was saying. But over time, actually, the brain was just mapping it. I was able to have a conversation between him and air traffic control. I might not have understood everything, but I was able to have a communication, recognise what they were saying and fly a plane.